Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of The MCR. Mac and me, my name's TJ, real quick. All right, on to the topic of this segment. Mac and I used to work together at a particular job for about 11 years. Uh, will not uh, share the name of the company or, or even the location. Yeah, that's irrelevant. Because uh, it does involve a little bit of disparaging comment as to the individual we reported to. And this individual would, on occasion, give us assignments, tasks, or dealing with the situation, this or that. And I remember one day, my frustration got the better of me. Because as we were reporting to the individual, the details of the situation, I I don't even remember the situation other than... His response was, I didn't say that. I didn't tell you to do that. To which Mike and I returned to our office. And in a fit of frustration, I blurt out, this is all but this is nothing but word games, excuses and scapegoats. Word games, excuses and scapegoats. Of course, that uh, phrase stuck with us for the duration of our employment there. And then we just shortened it to Wes, W-E-S, Word Games, Excuses, and Scapegoats. The reason why I share that little story from our past is I feel that this is what we got going on with Kamala Harris and the whole border czar issue. She wasn't said, she wasn't told she was the border czar. Now, I know the media has used that term quite a bit two, three years ago, and now they're trying to say they didn't. But, I, you know, I thought about it, and, you know, President Biden says she's going to uh, lead uh, the way in, uh, in securing the border. She's going to uh, take charge of the illegal immigration issue. And Michael Knowles even quoted Biden from a speech back in, I want to say, 2021, where President Biden made the comment, when she speaks, she speaks for me. But she was never the border czar. Back yeah, it's, 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 well, it's typical. We used to make a, a joke about that, Wes, with one of the uh, electricians that came to our building. And he would say, yeah, I don't want to be the S in Wes, meaning the scapegoat. Because yeah. they always had one there. They always find a scapegoat when there was a problem. Well, uh, I don't know who the scapegoat here is. I guess it's us because we, we, we're we believing what they said. Yeah. And, you know, you know, a czar by, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pervert a, a Shakespeare text here. I, uh, you, everyone has been forewarned. A czar by any other name is still a czar. Yeah. Okay. I, I've never liked to use the, the term czar anyway, because it's. You, you're right. I yeah. too did a little cringe to it, you know, because you had the you had the education czar, and and the one I really didn't like was you had the drug czar, you know, and and, and everyone knows you're not going to find that on anyone's door plaque or business card. Here, let me give you. I'm I'm the drug czar. Let me give you my business card. You well, know, Bill Bennett was called the, the education czar, and I don't believe that you're right. I didn't have a business card that said he was the education czar. That's, that's exactly who I was thinking about in, in uh, what I'm saying here. But, you know, it's, it was, it's just an unofficial nickname to uh, shorten, uh, to, to basically inform those of the position and authority they've been given. Well, right. he's, he's the drug czar. He's the education czar. Well, you know what? She's the border czar. Okay. Oh, well, he didn't say she was, you know, she, you know, Mayorkas doesn't report to her. Well, you know, she's the vice president, so maybe he does a little bit. But, you know, th- this whole twisting of the definition. Well, he's, a, he's a heartbeat away from reporting to her. That's for sure. Yeah. That, yeah. Big time. And, and, and then, I, you know, to, to see how the media is twisting themselves into pretzels on whether or not she was the border czar. It, you know what? It'd be infuriating if it wasn't so comical. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, he, he says she, you know, you know what you gotta, 
in reflecting back, especially in the one speech when she speaks for me, when she speaks, she speaks for me. You reflect back and wonder, did you mean what you were saying back then? Did he know what he was saying back then? Oh, that's a good question, too. You know, I mean, and and what kind of fools do they take us for? You know, well, they take us for big fools. They think they can uh, erase our minds. You know, you know. Uh, you're, they think we're going to unhear what we heard two, three years ago. I, yeah. Please, please. You know, as as I like to say, spare me the bovine excrement. Yeah, you know? the Mandela effect. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what? Hey, she she deserves every bit of criticism over this border situation, and 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 you can thank uh, the. Uh, I'll use a military term. Uh, President Biden with his TDY brain, temporary duty and route. Okay, right. his brains in TDY mode. But uh, you know, uh, oh no, you know, she, she's she's going to look into this. She's going to lead the way. She's going to this. She she speaks for me. You know, she's the borders are so. Well, here's what, media, I, here's what I would tell you. We all know the results of what's happened at the border. And I would tell you that's a, this is exactly what she wanted to happen at the border. And if she's elected president, she's going to continue to do exactly this and maybe even less to stop yeah. illegal immigration. Uh, I guess an American city has got to get nuked by one of these people crossing the border before before people wake up and realize it. Yeah. And last I heard, J.D. Vance has really taken it to her, too. So. Bravo to J.D. Vance for holding her feet to the fire. I mean, uh, Trump's doing it, too. But, you know, J.D. Vance, he he's 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 every much a pit bull like like Trump is uh, from what I can see so far. So so bravo to him. Uh, That that that's all I got. You know, just this uh, the whole word game thing, word games, excuses and scapegoats. Right. You know, I just I know I was talking I was talking to a. a friend and and a subscriber, and I kind of use him as a uh, a test on uh, t- for segments, you know. And I kind of bounce ideas off of him, and and I, I see what his response is, and and he kind of chuckles at it, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, and and if he's watching, he knows he knows who I'm talking about. But you know, it, it's just one of these things. I and I was telling, him, I said, you know, they're just, they, they, of course. Of course, they make up their own definitions as they go along, you know. Yes, uh, they do. I mean, I'll never forget Bill Clinton under in a deposition saying, well, it all depends what the meaning of is, is. You know, you talk about word games. Yeah, that's, like, that, that might be the textbook example. But anyways, that's 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 all I got for this venting, this ranting, this all of the above. Word games, excuses, and scapegoats. And that's what them Democrats are all about, too. So that's all I got. Uh, any anything else, Mac? Nope. All right. Okay. We'll call this one a wrap. Thanks everyone for your support, and uh, we'll catch you in the next segment. As always, be safe. Watch your six, and don't tread on me.